Hi everyone, my name is Sarah Jacobs. I'm a senior here at Wayne State, and the theme that I was given to work with this week was variation. Now when I think of variation in theater, uh, I think of different ways that plays can be interpreted or performed, so I decided to do something along those lines. Uh, I'm a big fan of Shakespeare, I love his work, so I had the idea of using one of his plays to demonstrate variation. So today we're going to be looking at three different ways that you can perform a monologue, specifically from Shakespeare's The Taming of the Shrew. Lutencio loves Bianca but cannot court her until her shrewish older sister Kate marries. The eccentric Petruchio marries the reluctant Kate and uses a number of tactics to render her an obedient wife. Lutencio marries Bianca and, in a contest at the end, Kate proves to be the more obedient wife. So in short, Catherine doesn't want to get married, Petruchio marries her and compels her to be obedient. And then everybody's happy? I guess? Now we are going to be looking at three different ways of performing Kate's final monologue from Taming of the Shrew, and to help me do that, I have three very talented friends helping me. So first up, we have my friend Paige, who will be performing uh, the monologue uh, straight. This is how it would have been played back in Shakespeare's time. So take it away, Paige. Hello, I'm Paige Chief. <clears throat> Fie, fie, unknit that threatening, unkind brown, and dart not scornful glances from those eyes. To wound thy lord, thy king, thy governor. It blots thy beauty as frosts do bite the meads. Confounds thy fame as whirlwinds shake fair buds, and in no sense is meet or amiable. A woman moved is like a fountain troubled, muddy, ill-seeming, thick, bereft of beauty, and while it is so, none so dry or thirsty will dine to sip or touch one drop of it. Thy husband is thy lord, thy life, thy keeper, thy head, thy sovereign, one that cares for thee and for thy maintenance, commits his body to painful labor, both by sea and land, to watch the night in storms, the day in cold. Okay, so what we just saw was it being played straight, it's to the point, um, she truly believes what she's saying. But what if Kate didn't believe what she was saying? What if she still had that fiery spirit that she's known for? Next up we have Morgan who will be showing us what a sarcastic reading of this monologue would look like. Fie. Fie. Fie! Unknit that threatening, unkind brow. The dark night scornful glances from those eyes. To wound thy lord, thy king, thy governor. It blots thy beauty as frost, do bite the meads. Confounds thy fame as whirlwinds shake fair buds. And in no sense is meat or amiable. A woman moved is like a fountain troubled. Muddy, ill-seeming. Thick, bereft of beauty, and while it is so, none so dry or thirsty will dine to sip or touch one drop of it. Thy husband is thy lord, thy life, thy keeper, thy head, thy sovereign. One that cares for thee and for thy maintenance commits his body to painful both by sea and land. Thank you very much, Morgan, for that wonderful performance. Um, so what we just saw was her being sarcastic. She's still got her fiery nature. She's still, you know, trying to fight back, but she's still playing the game that Petruchio and everyone else has set up for her. Next, we're going to go into a little bit of a different reading than how you would normally think of it. Uh, this reading, done by my friend Riley, uh, she still appears to believe what she's saying, but uh, in the background, she and Petruchio have this deal going on where 
they're trying to convince everyone that she has been tamed, but in reality, they're working together. And here's what that would look like. Fly, fly, unknit that threatening unkind brow, and dart not scornful glances from those eyes to wound thy lord, thy king, thy governor. It blots thy beauty as frosts do bite the meats, confounds thy fame as whirlwinds shake fair buds. And in no sense is me or my evil. A woman moved is like a fountain troubled. Money, ill-seeming, thick, bare fat of beauty. And while it is so, none so dry or thirsty will dine to sip or touch one drop of it. Thy husband is thy lord. Thy life, thy keeper, thy head, thy sovereign, one that cares for thee. And for thy maintenance commits his body to painful labor, both by sea and land, to watch the night in storms, the day in cold, whilst thou list warm at home. Thank you very much, Riley. Uh, as you can see, it's very similar to the straight performance, but you can tell there's a little bit something else going on underneath it, some subtext going on, uh, which lets you know that maybe what she's saying isn't exactly as it seems. All right, so that is it. Thank you all so much for watching. I had a lot of fun uh, making this, writing the script, and uh, working with my friends to make this video a reality. If you enjoyed it, uh, please like the video, and uh, have a good day. Bye!